Good evening, said Gentleman Piper. Hey, tonight I'm smoking from my no-name bench stem pipe. I've really come to love this pipe. I'm smoking some Washington Light Infantry from South Carolina. It's really a great blend. And I'm also drinking some whiskey that I made. I took some moonshine and aged it in a barrel. Notice my tumbler here with my monogram on it. And uh, I aged that moonshine for a few months. Got a year's worth of aging in it because it's a small barrel. And this is the smoothest whiskey I've ever had. This is some really good stuff. All right, hey, tonight I want to talk to you about friendships. Probably one of the most famous friendships in the Bible was the friendship between David and Jonathan. And Jonathan, of course, was King Saul's son. And Jonathan stuck by David through thick and thin. And it's because they both had a covenant relationship with each other. They pledged themselves to each other to defend each other. And men, we're guilty in this day and age of not keeping close uh, relationships, especially with other men. Uh, we weren't meant to be nomads, okay? We weren't meant to be solitary lone wolves. Men are, I wouldn't say pack creatures, but we're meant to socialize. We're meant to have friendships. And I encourage you to have at least one or two close friends that you can really pour your heart out to, people who will hold you accountable. That's a big thing. Uh, nobody likes accountability nowadays. And, you know... We need friends like that. I have two great friends, Jerry and Jason, whom I consider to be my best friends. Okay, uh, congratulations, Jerry. We just found out that he's going to be ordained a deacon in March, and I can think of nobody else worthy of such a great honor as Jerry. I love Jerry to death. And Jason, Jason's been a tremendous friend. Uh, he and his girlfriend, Kira, have stuck by me and my wife through thick and thin. Also, and I, I just, I love those two men dearly. And I hope that you have friends like that. Uh, if you have nothing but acquaintances, but nobody you can really call on, you know, that's, that's a sad way to live. So I encourage you to go out there and deepen these ties with people, even if it's one or two. We all need friends like that. And if you know me, you know my motto. Proverbs twenty-seven seventeen says, Iron sharpens iron. And it's on everything I own, practically. Uh, from my wedding band, my wallet, my fire pit, has it uh, stenciled in. Um, I love that motto, because it reminds me to find people who will build me up, and whom I can build up. And we just keep accountability with each other. You know, And I do that with my wife also. That's our motto. And I really, really want to instill that in you, that you need close friendships. We're not meant to be alone. All right. Uh, let me read a passage from Mansfield's book of Manly Men. Okay, it's by Stephen Mansfield. It's a great book. Page 80 says, this is in reference to uh, uh, David and Jonathan, talking about friendship. You don't betray with your words. You don't backstab. Correction happens in private, and that goes for husband and wives also. Okay. You correct each other in private, but you have each other's back in public. Uh, correction happens in private. Gossip and undercutting never happen at all. This is because all friendship is a form of covenant, a bond of mutual defense and support, and manly men keep their covenants. I can't stress that enough. Okay, Find someone that you can keep a covenant with, that you can be held accountable with, and you can hold them accountable, and you make each other better. Okay? We're meant to do that. So, get out there, make a great friend, be a great friend. And I wish you all the best. I really do. Hey, I love you. Take care, and I'll see you again soon. All right, take care. Bye-bye.